the National Taxpayers Executive Vice President. Uh, Brandon, um, that was their Tony Soprano moment right there, just showing up at the guy's door and ostensibly to say, you know, maybe we had some identity theft going on here. Just wondering what's going on. It is weird, isn't it? It's extremely weird. And you look at it, not just the timing of the hearing and the visit from the IRS, the fact that it was an unannounced visit, those are very rare. Usually you will get a letter or at least a phone call notifying you that the IRS is coming to your door. And the fact that they're looking at 2018 tax returns, usually the IRS tells you to keep your tax returns and all related information for three years. That is the window in which they look at tax returns more scrutinously, where they run audits. But here we're looking back even further. The question is why? Thankfully, we have Chairman Jordan looking into this matter because it raises so many questions. It's extremely fishy, especially at a time when the IRS had this huge budget boost, $80 billion, and is getting more powerful and larger. You know what I didn't know, and maybe you can help me with this, is that an IRS agent can go to your home and visit and point thing out. Well, in this case, oh, by the way, you know, about this thing, you might have had identity theft going some years back. Of course, they can do that in a letter. Um, but I didn't know that their, their new powers include house visits. Yeah, they do have the ability to make house visits, and that was actually done in a more aggressive fashion before the Taxpayer Bill of Rights was passed. That reigned in the IRS abuse a little bit. They still do make house calls, but again, they typically precede those house calls with an announcement that usually comes in the U.S. mail. So you do get a heads up that they're coming. You know that they're going to arrive in most circumstances. There are some criminal mm -hmm. investigation and other reasons why that won't be the case, though. Well, I'm, I'm ready for them, Brandon. I have this uh, real tyrant of a little Britney Spaniel. Um, his bark makes up for his lack of bite. Uh, but any IRS agent even dare steps at my doorstep. It, it, it won't end well. But, but, but that's a separate issue. Let me ask you about what we're learning on the refund front so far this year, that refunds are turning out to be a little bit smaller this year than prior years. I'm not aware of all the reasons, but the reason why a lot of people focus on this is that is the means by which we see a lot of spending down the road. Um, do you see that a a as an issue? Uh, because they're, they're, right now, um, the, the expectation was that we'd have a lot more that Americans could look forward to getting, and we're not seeing it. Yeah, we were a little spoiled uh, during the pandemic years because we had these stimulus payments, which in th some instances increased people's tax refunds. And we also had a ramped up child tax credit. The child tax right. credit was $3,000, $3,600 if you had younger children. Now that's regressed back down to $2,000, which was set by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So for those reasons, people are getting smaller refunds. This is a double-edged sword. Obviously, we want people to have more money in their pockets. But as the time when inflation is incredible, high, still at 6%, just north of 6%, people going out and spending those refunds actually could help to ameliorate inflation a little bit. All right. I know that chart might have confused people. And for all it means, it's, it's, it's very, very accurate. I'm not here to second guess it. But the, the average that we're here with ours is that uh, refunds will be about $372, smaller than the average expected this year. It's still early. We don't know how it's going to end up. So I didn't mean to confuse folks. Wait a minute. Neil's saying one thing and showing another. But let me get your sense about this added funding for the IRS, because on top of the $80 billion that they've already been guaranteed as part of that last package, now they want what will be essentially a 15 percent boost in further funding, presumably to go after tax cheats or uh, maybe improve, you know, customer service. Uh, do, do we know how that money is going to be used? Well, we still don't have a full readout on how they're going to spend the $80 billion that they already got. They were supposed to produce that weeks ago, and then that deadline passed, and Yellen said, well, it'll be another few weeks. So we still don't have those details, yet they are going to Congress, and as you said, requesting an additional 15 percent boost. Now, this news with, uh, with Mr. Taibbi is very concerning because a lot of conservatives, myself included, have said these enforcement actions will result in more in-person visits, IRS agents and other people knocking on our doors and asking us questions. And this looks like it's actually happening, despite the fact that people on the left said that we were bonkers for even suggesting that that might occur. So, yeah, I do think enforcement actions are going to increase. I do think they're going to try to complete our taxes for us, to fill out our tax returns for us, which is incredibly concerning because that creates a huge conflict of interest. We are looking at a ramped up, supersized IRS that just doesn't stop growing. Good stuff, Brandon. Thank you. Very good seeing you, Brandon Arnold, following all of that. In the meantime, we're